So here's a classic case of diffuse cystic lung disease. And I think most of you guys already know what this is. So this is a patient with cysts of various sizes, oval and round, spaced throughout the lungs. Really no zonal predilection here. Certainly does extend into the cosphrenic angles as well. And so when we see diffuse cystic lung disease, the classic differential diagnosis really is lymphangelimimatosis or Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So I think in most instances, it's pretty obvious that something is Langerhans cell histiocytosis because those cysts that occur in that setting are bizarre. That's what they call them. And they certainly are. You see these cysts which are running into each other, have angular or odd shapes. They're not pretty like this. They're not oval and all round like that. And oftentimes there is some associated micronodularity associated with that, almost like a diffuse nodular lung disease, given that the cysts that we see in Langerhans cell histiocytosis emanate from those nodules. Those nodules will cavitate out and then start to become cystic and they will start running into each other and get these odd shaped cysts. Also in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, I have not seen a case that is not at least basilar sparing. So almost always you're gonna see cosphrenic angle sparing and very, almost always it's gonna be upper lung preponderant, but all cases will give you at least relative basilar sparing. And that's a nice thing about Langerhans cell histiocytosis. As opposed to this, this is a case of lymphangelimimitosis. And so these cysts here are prettier. And again, spaced throughout the lungs without really a zonal predilection here. Sometimes you can see basal predominance, but certainly they're not gonna spare the lung bases or the costophrenic angles. And so when someone does have lymphangelimimitosis, usually they're gonna be women, almost always gonna be women. Uh, they're pretty rare to have this in men. So you can have the sporadic type, or you could have the tuberous sclerosis related lymphangelimimitosis. And so that's where you might see some men having lymphangelimimitosis, but even in that setting, it's pretty unusual. Usually this is women. So women of childbearing age, there's likely some sort of estrogenic effect to lymphangelimimitosis. More and more now we think of lymphangelimimitosis as a low grade malignancy, rather than just the diffuse cystic lung disease or an interstitial lung disease. This really acts like a low-grade malignancy. And the treatment for this, we do now have a treatment that seems to work, is our mTOR inhibitor. So you probably have heard of sirolimus. So sirolimus is one where I think is, was the first one which was used in this setting and was shown to have efficacy. And so that is the one that you've probably heard most about. And that's used both in sporadic and the secondary subtype of lymphangelimimatosis. In lymphangelimimatosis, due to tuberous sclerosis, you're also looking for other manifestations, other stigmata of tuberous sclerosis. And so tuberous sclerosis is associated with sclerotic bone lesions. And we certainly see a lot of those here in the spine. A ton of these sclerotic bone lesions as we scroll through. But you have to be looking for them. They're not going to just jump out at you. But certainly as you look, you see many sclerotic lesions throughout the bones. And then for you, those of you guys who have Hawkeyes, let's just pop into soft tissue here. You guys probably have looked in the upper abdomen and you see these very large angiomyolipomas of the kidneys bilaterally. Maybe there's a little localized hemorrhage in here. And then also, if you look very carefully, you see these hyperdensities in liver are actually fat density. So there's minus 41 Hounsfield units in there. Other things to look for are in the heart. So in the heart here, we see these areas of fatty infiltration, which also has been well described in the setting of tuberous sclerosis. So here is not a gated study, but the non-contrast helps us. These areas of fatty infiltration within the LV myocardium have been described. As we look, we also see this low density lesion here in the paraspinal region. We measure it and it's gonna be around fluid density. So the Hounsfield unit of one Hounsfield unit and so lymphangiomas also can occur in the setting of lymphangelimimatosis, whether related to tuberous sclerosis or not. Anyways, this is a classic case of tuberous sclerosis, lymphangelimimatosis with other manifestations of tuberous sclerosis, including the angiomyolipomas within the kidneys, probably within the liver, as well as the fatty infiltration of the LV myocardium and the bony lesions.